feels like such an honor. It feels uh, humbling and exciting, you know. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I've known about the festival. It looms large in my mind, and uh, to be able to close out this festival is, is really a, a great honor. Uh, one of the producers, Tressa Park, had uh, um, sent me the collection and asked me to read one story that wasn't, uh, that wasn't this story. Uh, and I loved the story. Um, it was called The Cartographers, but it, I didn't, it didn't necessarily resonate uh, in, in regards to me making or adapting it. Uh, and then, I, but I found another short story uh, that I really responded to. And I think, you know, it was such a grounded v vision of the future. And I love that it was just through the lens of a family, you know, it was a domestic lens. And often when you do a sci-fi, it's the end of the world and you're only following like heroes and villains. But this was just telling the story of, uh, in the short story is just a day in the life of this father who ha is a bit annoyed that his this robot has been broken. And by the end of the day, you know, he has some memories about the robot and uh, and he, kind of discovers grief that he didn't know he had. But there, in, this, in that small story, there was see, uh, like seeds of so many things that I wanted to explore. And one of it was that, that the robot was Asian, the writer's not Asian, but even the idea of the construct of Asianness, like an Asian robot, it is like a manufactured Asian robot. And I think as someone who uh, is a part of the diaspora, I think anyone who's a part of the diaspora, you understand that feeling of the construct of your identity li living outside of that, that space. And so I wanted to explore that as well. The story is really following this father who is trying to fix this robot for his daughter. You know, they, they've, uh, in this sort of future world, you can buy robots to be like surrogate siblings. And there's a specific kind of surrogate siblings for adopted children. She, uh, she's a Chinese uh, that you can buy like a cultural robot that will help them connect to their uh, heritage. And that's who Yang is. And he's trying to fix uh, Ye Yang mostly just for his daughter and also because he, he, the Yang has almost become a babysitter. So as a, as a parent, uh, it allows them to be a bit more free. So it's really like this act to do it not out of... Um, compassion or, or because they but really out of convenience but through that process he discovers more and more about Yang and 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 has uh, really literally has to contend with memories about Yang yeah. being someone who I was born in Korea but I came to America very young I was a toddler um, and so most of my life has been sort of navigating uh, a Western world, a largely white Western world, and uh, trying to understand, you know, both, but, but I, of course, am Asian, you know, like when people see me, they, they have a, a ton of assumptions and expectations and um, that I have had to contend with, you know, and sometimes it's a perception of Asianness that I don't even have about myself. And so it's this sort of ongoing struggle to know what it means to be Asian, if I'm Asian enough. And sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes you feel too Asian or not Asian. So that is like, I think, again, for people who are um, in that feeling displaced, that's an ongoing struggle. Um, so it really was a way to try to sort through this longing for place, you know. And though it's specifically Asian in this story, and my struggle is specifically Asian, I think we live in a modern world, and I think this feeling of alienation, displacement is universal. I don't think you, you know, I think uh, all, all of us can feel that, that need to belong and to feel connected in the world. So I think in this larger way, this, you know, because Jake, is also, you know, at the beginning, the father in the story is adrift. You know, he feels disconnected to his family. He feels um, like the thing that he thought he loved was his tea and was trying to make a business of it is, um, you know, that, that he's lost whatever passion or belief he's had in that as well. So I think most sci-fi is like the future is dystopian. Um, you know, you see metal and glass and, and it's about some large, um, you know, large uh, world struggle. And this exists in the film, but it's all very backgrounded. And when I watch sci-fi, I think the thing that I find myself longing for is like knowing how normal people are trying to get through the day, <laughs> you know? I, I, like, you know, I'll see a, some a big sci-fi and sometimes in the background you see a family and I'm like, uh, what is that their life you know, like? And, um, 
and you know, like we will sometimes be in the midst of world events, like there's a war going on uh, uh, in Ukraine, and but you know, most people are still just trying to get through a day. And I just thought, God, I would love a sci-fi in which it, it, you know, really it, you're you're stuck in a domestic space and you're fi figuring out what the struggles of their their lives are. So, um, and then the other thing was the like also presenting a more organic kind of future. You know, I had this sort of backstory that there was some cataclysmic climate event that it, that this was a sort of post post apocalyptic story that this society was sort of uh, emerged from. Um, you know, disaster and how to make peace with nature. So I also wanted to kind of create a different type of aesthetic that was more uh, organic and there weren't floating screens and, and metal and glass everywhere.